Hi, and welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Karen Stevens, and I'm your host tonight. Before we introduce our guest, I'd like to introduce our panel. Ms. Iris Acker, actress and our producer. Mr. Michael McKeever, actor and playwright. And Bill Hirschman, theater critic and editor of FloridaTheaterOnStage.com. Our guest today is Michelle Solomon, who is the editor and theater critic for MiamiArtZine.com. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me here. So good to have you here Thank today. Thank you. So let's begin with what it is you do. What it you is I do. You are an editor and theater critic for MiamiArtZine.com. What does that entail? Editor really entails making sure that everything's updated on the site. I assign our writers. Um, I make sure that we have people that are covering events. Our, our photo galleries are one of our most popular events. We make sure where the photographers are going to be. And uh, just make sure everything looks supremely wonderful. And uh, the big thing on Miami Art Zine that we've started is we really update um, twice a day um, so that we're, we really look like a news site um, for the arts. So every day um, I update a couple times a day with brand new stories. Um, whatever's come in, rewriting press releases, but we like to have fresh content mm -hmm. all the time. How long has Miami Art Zine been in, in existence? It's actually celebrating its 10-year anniversary. Oh, yeah. yeah. That. Monday, <laughs> October 26th. Wow, yeah. time sure flies. Yeah. And you uh, all having a, well, so you, have you been there the, the entire time? I haven't. I've been the editor for two years. Um, and there were a few editors before me, but um, we've really redesigned the site now. The last two years, we've really kind of come into our own. Mm -hmm. well, Michelle, an editor, when I think I hear edit, means they go through the column, they say, no, out, out. You know, I gave um, an interview once, and uh, not only was it, most of it cut, <laughs> it was reworded a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, they changed. The, you do that? Well, I have a background as a content editor. I worked for the Detroit Free Press. I worked for the Albany Times Union. So I've been an editor in newspapers for a while. And um, I really, being a writer, I respect the writers. Um, I don't want somebody to have their byline show up and say, that's not the story I wrote. That's probably so the most horrific thing you can see, and uh, I've had that happen to me. So wow. I really do yeah. speak with our writers uh, if I want to change something. And um, you know, we just have such great writers. We have such enthusiastic writers. Um, our writers are people that want to be working for us. I can't say that in a nonprofit uh, Miami art scene, we're run by the Miami Beach Cultural Trust. Um, I'm not sure you're going to make a living <laughs> writing for Miami art scene. So people are pretty passionate about what they're doing and they really want to be there and they want to be uh, really pursuing and helping. What we really do is help the arts community. Michelle, what are some of the arts groups and um, uh, arts events that you cover? Uh, we really are very big on, um, on the fine arts. Um, we have two mm -hmm. very good fine arts writers, Irene Sperber and Monica Torres who actually go out and cover Wynwood and different places, live events. Um, we do theater, so we're really into live, uh, really creating a live experience. If you're not there uh, and you're reading our site, hopefully you get the essence of what happened at that event. Nice. Uh, Roger Martin's our theater critic as well as myself. We have a classical music writer, Steve Gladstone. He also goes to opera and he does jazz. And uh, we have Ruben Rosario who does movies. So we're pretty covered, um, and we try to cover every spectrum. We also just added um, Cameron Basden, who's doing our dance coverage. So there, there's so much, there's so much to the art scene in Miami. There, are you able to reach as much of it, cover as much of it as you want? And if not, how do you decide on any given week or any given day what you're going to be able to cover? That's a great question. Um, that is such a wonderful problem that we have. Um, I don't think people really give as much credence to how much, I mean, I could go out, and I know that we're all part of the arts community, we could go out every night. I could go out every night in Miami, see something, review it. Um, we really don't have that much manpower, so uh, we really try to cover some of the major events. Um, we don't, unfortunately, do a lot of community events. We don't do community orchestras or community theater. So that kind of narrows the field where we're doing professional. Um, and um, basically just really pick and not choose. It's not really a choice. It's what's happening today, what's the manpower we have, and that is part of the editor's job, to really figure out, okay, I have Irene, or I have Monica, or I have Steve. Where can I put that manpower that's gonna best serve 
uh, what we're trying to mm -hmm. achieve, which is to really make it look like we're all over the place. I did actually um, want to speak about Henry Perez and Richard Fettelman, who are our videographer and our, and our photographer. So what we'll do is we'll use them to kind of make it look, not make it look because we are there, but rather than the writing part, we'll have the photographer and we'll have the video edit, you know, the vide videographer, and it really creates that live experience. What we really want to do is create a live experience for our readers. I couldn't get there, what happened, and uh, we also have a very vibrant calendar. Are you um, saying readers, do you know what your readership is? How many actually, I say tune in because you're online? Mm -hmm. Uh, it's hard to gauge. I mean, we do have some stats that are analytics that we can look at. Amazingly, we have a, a very big readership from um, from here, of course. But then we go all over the United States, we see the people tune in. So maybe snowbirds are looking to see what they can come and see on the calendar. Mm -hmm. And then we have a European, we have a lot of European group and people, and we're thinking that those are people that visit. And then um, a lot of uh, South America, we have a lot of Brazilian readers. Wow. So really? We actually are thinking about maybe creating um, our stuff in Espanol. Uh, wow. Maybe starting wow. the site doing, because um, we have a lot of Spanish, we see that we have a lot of Spanish readers well, that are they, reading in English. So. How do they know about it though? How do you advertise what you're doing so they know to tune in? Um, I think that we have a lot of link, you know, we link um, from other places. If we write a review, somebody will link to us. Uh -huh. um, we send out e-blasts that are really popular every week and we do a ticket giveaway on Wednesday, which is wildly popular. And I've had a lot of um, interest from arts groups to participate in that. So every Wednesday, if you sign up for our e-blast, you get a chance to win tickets to, you know, the ballet, or we gave we give a lot of movie tickets away, um, and that's really generated. We really are, as an editor, I am always trying to think of how we can bolster things. What's going to reach the audience? What's what's going to get people to to tune in, as you say? Um, but we are we are growing all the time, and the fact that we've been around for ten years. Um, I mean, if you think where, where online was 10 years ago, I mean, we sure. all think of it the way sure. it is now, but it was really the dream of Harvey Burstein, who's the, um, who's the publisher, to have a magazine that represented um, Miami and Miami Beach, which now we're covering everywhere. I mean, we even go to Palm Beach County. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we're hoping to get down here, yeah, yeah, our Palm Beach County <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, So um, yeah, we're really, you know, Harvey's really had this idea 10 years ago that he wanted to create something that was a, a, a place for writers and the community to find a place to be able to appreciate and love the arts. Well, something that's happened too is that Harvey really has put together over these past 10 years a really great team. I mean, whenever I see Henry Perez or Roger at an event, they, you could just tell they love where they are. They love what they're doing. They love the art that they're covering. Mm -hmm. And it's infectious. I, I know Thank that you. when I see Henry at an event, I can't wait to see, you know, the pictures <laughs> that are going to be um, coming from it. Yes, I think that one thing about Miami art scene, we, you know, we are people that are just passionate about the arts and passionate about really helping the community. I mean, that's what we really are about. We're a voice for the community. I mean, a lot of uh, arts groups can put out pub, um, PR, you know, press releases and, and things, but to go out and have somebody actually cover your event or do a preview for your event or do a gallery at your event, um, I mean, it's, it's just something that we want to do. I mean, we, we do have advertising. Um, we don't charge a lot for our advertising. <laughs> we probably should. Um, and uh, I don't handle that part of it, so I probably shouldn't be speaking out of turn. But we do have <laughs> advertising, and we do do a lot of grants. We get grants, and that's how we... Well, we well, well let's say I'm an arts organization who wants to advertise on Miami Art Scene. How would I go about doing that? Advertising? Uh, yeah. Ooh, <laughs> good question. Thank you, Michael. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, Harvey Burstein um, does deal with that. You can also, we're, we're always willing to take money. Sure. We also have a donation um, button on the top of our, of our site on the homepage. So anybody that would like to donate and our big anniversary party every year, um, we do a silent auction. And that really raises money. And a lot of our money does go for paying for the web creator, you know, the webmaster, myself, and for our, our staff, just so people can get a little bit of gas money to go out and cover <laughs> these things. You mentioned passion. You said you're passionate about what you do, as everybody else's thing was. Bill said you could tell, Michael said you could tell what they, they are and they're passionate. You all started very early, though, didn't you? Oh, it did. Um, well, I had a great mom who was a, an actress, and uh, my mom's still around. She's 85. And she was an actress and a tap dancer. 
So I uh, wanted me to follow in her footsteps. And uh, I can't say she was a Gypsy, Gypsy Rose Lee's mom, but, <laughs> but we had a little bit of a, we had a Gypsy Rose Lee relationship. But, um, <laughs> but uh, mom really had the passion for the arts too. And I, I actually used to sing on the steel pier in Atlantic City. I started when I was five years old. Wow. So wow. I was a professional performer when I was five. Well, you were five years old. When I was if five. that means they paid you. Uh, yeah, I was professional, I got paid, so I had, a, I had money that kept me going to Atlantic City for the summer and, and kept mom and me having summer vacations um, every summer. So I always knew that I was going to somehow be in the arts and I, I went to Emerson College of Boston. I wanted to do theater and ended up um, becoming a theater critic for a, a newspaper. So. <laughs> so how does that how does that work? How do you morph from a performer into a uh, theater critic uh, slash editor. Is that someone that just has bright ideas and a lot of energy? Or is there actually uh, some some training groundwork that you have to to um, go through to to be really good at what you do? Which well, you I, I started, um, I just basically fell into my first job. I was very lucky. I, uh, I, I went to Emerson College and then um, was gonna, I went to New York for a little while and didn't really I, I just, I, I, one of my um, cohorts in New York and at Emerson College was Mario Cantone, who people know. And uh, Mario and I used to have this conversation of it. He used to say, I would eat dirt to get a part in a show. And I thought, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I have that in me. <laughs> eat dirt to get a part in a show. So, um, you know, really fell into it. I, I guess I always had a knack for writing and ended up, um, had so much background, I played in a rock band. And, Did um, you hear that? Say that again. <laughs> I played in a rock band <laughs> and, um, and had done theater for so long and had directed theater in college. And I kind of knew, I just sort of knew it and it just all fell together. I, I started going to, I was an arts critic for uh, the newspaper and I had to go to a show every night. Um, everything from Polish dancers to Chinese <laughs> acrobats to, uh, you know, reviewing Frankie Valli. <laughs> so um, that was my beginnings. And um, what happened was basically I just kind of took to it. And I learned how to write in a breaking news environment. So I had to go, it was good old days, which Bill yeah. will remember, when we had to like <laughs> run to the theater, leave the theater, and uh, run back and type up our story. So, I, you know, that really helped me that I got that training early on, that I could really, you know, write a, write a feature in 30 minutes. So. Does, does the fact that you uh, are a performer, that you are a, a playwright, a musician, a, a singer, stand-up co um, comedian, do all these things impact you as an editor for something like Miami Arts? I think so. I think I have a, a real understanding. I think that's a great question. I have a real understanding, and I have had people in the past, you know, we all are on stage or behind the scenes or theater critics, whatever we do, people will write to me and say, how could you say that that, wasn't, that show wasn't good? Or how could your writer not think that piece of art was wonderful? And as we all know, that's very uh, you know, objective, what, what, anybody, what everybody wants to think about and write about. So um, I really think that I can, I can back that up. And I can say, you know, I, I have been on stage. Um, I haven't painted, so I, I don't really say that I know that. But I, I've played instruments. I played French horn and flute. And you know, I know how to I know how to do things <laughs> musically. I played in bands. I've you know. She's been a longshoreman. <laughs> <laughs> We're sitting She's here overwhelmed. <laughs> well, I will say that all you know, it's 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 kind of a, I don't feel like I'm really a jack of all trades, a master of none, because everything sort of fits together. Mm -hmm. It's all sure. you know in it the same media. In. It's all you know. It's music. It's art. It's theater. One, th it's, one thing I'm curious about because you have spent time in print journalism as well. What do you see the evolution? as far as cyber journalism, what is it that cyber yeah. journalism can do that print cannot? Mm -hmm. you've, you've, you obviously see capabilities. I think that um, cyber journalism and what I really pay attention to is it's a really on-demand art. In know? what sense? It's an on-demand that, that people can decide, you know, well, I, I'm really interested in this, in this art story. I'm going to read that. Or I'm not so interested. I mean, really, when you open, I mean, I love newspaper. Believe me, I came, you know, I was birthed in newspaper. I love newspaper. But newspapers, really, I open the paper, I look at that story, and it's in front of me there. Mm -hmm. I think what people are really taking to now is we be really become an on-demand society. So it's like, I want to read about theater today, I, and I want to look at a picture of me. I'm not really interested in the arts, but I want to see that show that I was at. I know I'm in that gallery. <laughs> so I think that really, it, it really creates a, a wider spectrum and a wider 
audience that I think we can really engage for arts. Mm -hmm. Because I might get somebody that's not so interested in our theater criticism that wants to see their picture in the gallery and says, hey, look at this site, this is great. Uh -huh. So I think that's another way to, to really, and you know, video is really, I mean, we started using Richard Fennelman and video is just, it's really coming up. Um, people really look at our videos. So, so do you think that, that that the cyber, as far as cyber journalism goes, that it, it is actually going to win the day as far as, uh, <laughs> win the day. as it, you know, as opposed to print. I mean, because there's some, some of us who don't want to let go of, uh -huh. of print. Um, but because we're moving forward at such a fast pace, do you think that it's actually going to be the, the only? I think that things are going to morph in a different way. I mean, I know mm -hmm. I, I taught a course um, at, called Reporting for the Internet, and um, I was teaching students how to take their, um, it was at a university, and I would teach students who were majoring in mainstream things. They were at marketing and advertising and print journalism, and I would have to teach them how to report for the Internet, which is a whole different thought process. It's a whole different way of thinking. It's shorter. You mm -hmm. have to create links. You have to think about galleries. It's really multidimensional. Mm. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to disappear. People ask me that all the time, if print's going to yeah. disappear. There are some of us that are always going to want. Um, but I think that when you look at kids that are now 12, 13, 14 years old, I mean, I'll talk to friends' kids about my movie reviewing, and, um, and they'll say, oh, well, I went to Rotten Tomatoes. You know, I, I look at, and that's a site mm. that has so many different critics, and it's another piece of my on-demand. If you read a movie review or a theater review in the newspaper, you have one critic that you can read. If you go to Rotten Tomatoes, uh -huh. you, can, you can hear 15, 25, 30 voices. What voice are you going to want to pay attention to? Sure. There might be somebody that rings more true to your soul than just that one person that's the theater reviewer. So. Interesting. Which brings up a, a, a really good point. How does, how does Miami Art Zine dis differentiate or distinguish their voice to make it that special voice that people are gravitated to? Great question. Well, I think that we really are, um, I really develop our arts writers. I really help them to develop. I'm trying to get some younger arts writers because really what I feel like is what we do is we will create arts writers, but we're also creating arts, um, people that enjoy the arts or people that will go. I, you know, we go to, I talked to Lourdes Lopez, who's the head of Miami City Ballet, and I really talked mm. about how they've trimmed a couple shows in Fort Lauderdale. I was doing a story on their 30th anniversary opening, and um, they've had a trim because of audience. I feel like if I, I've had interns yeah. that I'll send to the ballet or I'll send to the opera, and they'll be like, yeah, I don't know if I can do this. I said, no, I'll help you. I will help you. I will, I will show you how to do this and how you write it, and you'll do it just like you could do a rock concert. I've had interns that have gone to the opera and the ballet and they want to return again and again. So I feel like what I'm cultivating is an arts writer, but also somebody who's an arts aficionado. Mm. Good for you. That's and, wonderful. And um, that's really important to me. And it's really what we do with our, with our writers too. Michelle, I, mean, I know though something I don't think they do, is that you gave up a very good TV job to do what you're doing now. I did. Tell them about that. Was it NBC? Uh, I was at uh, ABC, oh, Local ABC. 10 Miami, and I was executive producer of Online and Interactive, and uh, I was also at the Detroit television, st television station. I had gone um, from Detroit Free Press to across the street to the TV station and had some TV experience, so I did do some on air. Um, and then I, it was 1999, and we were creating this online thing, <laughs> and the news director said, geez, I know somebody who knows how to do television and print. And I did that, and I loved it. I did it for, for a number of years, and I was moved to Miami to become their executive producer of online new media. But when you're in that field of news, you don't really get to do arts anymore. You don't mm -hmm. get to really, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of, you know, shepherding people that are going out and, and doing crime. And that's what local news is, and I have no, no complaints over that. Just for me, I wanted to give back a little more. You know, I really, I think, and then when the opportunity for some different things came up for Miami <coughs> Art Scene, to do some other kind of writing for magazines and things. I just thought, well, this is where I really live and breathe, and this is what I want to do. And she walked away from it. And I did. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you have to do what you, want, what you want in life. You have to have a passion. And I could have been totally, you know, I mean, I loved it there. I was secure. I was set. I could have stayed there. They loved me, and I, I loved you guys, too, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, yeah, they, they were very encouraging to me, and they knew, you know, they knew that. 
that and I And then on a completely different track, you've, as you alluded to, you've also been a stand-up comedian. Oh, yes. And I'm glad which you met. just, along with being a longshoreman, is not <laughs> something you would normally uh, talk a little bit about what, how much you've done in that area, what it's like, mm -hmm. uh, how it informs what you do. Well, it all goes back to really being creative. You know, I did improv for a while, and I was with a funny group here called Laughing Gas, which mm -hmm. Karen probably mm -hmm. knows. <laughs> and uh, I love the improv because I wasn't doing acting. I don't feel like being a theater critic, I should be in shows. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'd love to be in shows, but you know, I don't think that's really the right way to go when you're when you're on the other side of it. So I had to find some way to get my you know performing juices out there, <laughs> and I did improv. And then uh, one of my coaches said to me, you know, you're a writer. Why don't you write your own stuff? So I never thought of that. That sounds kind of fun. And I I trained with a, 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 a stand-up comic named um, Dean Napolitano, and he really helped me um, hone my writing. And it was at the Improv Fort Lauderdale, uh, Hollywood. Um, and um, I just started writing my own stuff, and then I started producing a show called Some Ladies Live. And we were five female comedians, um, and we would perform at the improv, and we were going to take that show on the road, but, you know, life gets in the way. <laughs> but there's still, Karen, there's still a spot for you. Oh, good. <laughs> good. I was going to say, I was going to do there's that still, show. Yeah. <laughs> and then we had Glamorous Girls of Comedy. So really what it did for me was it, you know, it was a, it, it, it build that performance juice for me and it also you know it's all it's all connected when I talk I mean it does sound like I'm a longshoreman <laughs> but um, you and know, ventriloquist it's, and a ventriloquist <laughs> but it's, really, <laughs> it's really all connected it's writing it's theater it's comedy it's yeah. it's arts I mean I am a passionate arts purveyor <laughs> That's wonderful. No, it shows. Obviously, it shows. Do you think that you'll um, pursue and continue the stand-up route just as a, if nothing else, as a, as a side venture? Um, I do like doing that. Um, I think when you're stand-up, and, and Karen and I have talked about this, you really have to invest a lot of time in it. I mean, the people that I know, my comedy partner, Pam Bruno, she is out there doing open mics, going to New York, going to L.A. I mean, you have to commit to it. And I do do it as kind of a side hobby, and it's it's you know, as we used to say in Boston, wicked fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's wicked fun, um, but to be a real, really, you know, to make that your life's journey, you have to commit to it. Um, so I have fun with it, and I do like the producing. I mean, our show's been successful, and we might do that again. We might do a show with the Fillmore um, with Some Ladies Live and have a, get a, a mainstream. We have a woman in L.A. that we've talked to that would like to come and perform, and I like that. I like the nice. producing side of it. I do. You yeah, do. I was going to say, is that something that you think you might, you know, gravitate to more in the future? Um, um, I do enjoy that. I enjoy seeing the, it's, it's kind of like what we all know when we're, when we're directing a show or anything we do when we're in a show or when we're writing or when we're producing a TV show. It's like you see kind of the fruits of that. You know, you see where you started. Um, for my for my my five comedians that I've gotten together, I you know we worked with them. We tried to make them all different in their genre, and uh, and then you see the people come out. We actually did a benefit for Gilda's Club, which was mm. very very gratifying. Um, we raised like five hundred dollars for Gilda's Club, so that was another thing. And then to have people lined up outside the Improv that are coming to see you, and yeah. then you have all these people and they're laughing and they're entertained and they come up to you at the end and say. That was a great show. There's a little more to that than just being the performer. You know, uh -huh. you know that you did it from beginning to end. Sure, sure. And then you get to perform too. I mean, I, I put myself on my own show. <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> back, back to editing. What is it that civilians would not realize is particularly difficult and challenging about the job? They, they, they go online, they see this wonderful mm -hmm. website, but there's parts of it that are difficult. What, what are the challenges? That there's you... a lot of moving parts as we say, everybody says in their business, I think now, that's like one of the new 21st century buzzwords. Well, I have all these moving parts. I have all these moving parts. I have to make sure somebody's at the show or the art performance or whatever. You know, we have a calendar. Um, we, there's, you know, we have to make sure the web programmers are posting things. We have to I have to make sure that the photo gallery is, who's, go who's going to the photo gallery? What is that? I'll go in and somebody will put a headline in. You know, one of the programmers will put a headline in and, you know, it it's what we call it breaks, where it would say once at, you know, the Broward d set, you know? <laughs> well, I have to go in and fix that. Once at the Broward Center because it's too long to fit in that piece. I mean, these are just little tiny things that people don't see. Mm -hmm. They say, oh, that was a beautifully written story. That looks great. The pictures are great. Yeah. Or, um, 
you know, somebody's name will be captioned incorrectly. I mean, it's just you have to go, you have to cross your T's and dot your I's, make sure you don't want a, a mistake in the, in the print, or you don't want a headline to read funny, or you don't want your writer to have said something that maybe doesn't emote what they were trying to say. And, you know, I'll call a writer up and say, maybe you want to say this a different way, or is this what you meant? So it's not just cutting and pasting and posting the story and it's up. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are a lot of different, as the editor, you're really, you know, you're sitting in the, you know, the spaceship, you know, you're, you're Captain Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> so if, um, what if, if you, could you give the viewers the um, website address? Oh, uh, sure. It's www.miamiartzine.com. Spell www. art scene, please. Oh, yes, right. We had this because somebody said scene. It's www.miamiartzine, Z-I-N-E, like magazine. We're an online magazine, dot com. You know, with your many talents, and they could be used, I think, even more for art scene. There should be a comedy corner. Oh, yeah. And, yes, don't you think? And put everything that you do to use. Well, we've actually thought about me having a column. So? Um, so, yeah, maybe that this is the impetus. <laughs> if you're watching, start the column. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, you have so much material that you could share. You know, I think it's and a time thing. I really do. I mean, it takes so much time mm -hmm. to be the editor and to make everybody else look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, but, you know, we have talked about me having a column. I mean, I, I think the first person, I'm not sure how columns play anymore. Uh, they used to be a really big thing in newspapers. Everybody had a columnist. Well, they're all blogs now, though. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. I think they've just evolved into yeah. blogs. Yeah. I mean, I guess, okay. But Jason Zinneman for the New York Times, that's all he does is he writes about comedy. Yeah. Of course, it's the New York Times. <laughs> <laughs> but if they read this, they'll know when you're appearing in your comedy act. So that self uh, you tease them now. <laughs> you have teased our viewers. Now. Teaser, okay. Let's, let's try Into it. wanting to see you live. I have reviewed comedy for us, and um, you know there have been shows, Margaret Show, different people that have come into town. Well, I want to tease the viewing audience into seeing our joint comedy show <laughs> yeah, sometime right. in the near future. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. But, uh, but uh, really, though, thank you for being here with us today, Michelle. It's been very informative, very yeah. enlightening, That's and all the best to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We want to thank our panel today. You guys have been exemplary, as usual. <laughs> thank you, the viewing audience. Thanks for viewing Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Karen Stevens, your host. If you'd like to know what's going on in the South Florida theater scene, pl scene please visit floridatheateronstage.com. We'll see you next week.